Welcome to the Thin Within Podcast, the show for women who want mental secrets for weight loss mastery. I'm your host, Marna Thal. I'm the owner of ThinWithin.com, and I'm here to give you the inside scoop on how to lose weight by mastering your inner game. Diets never work for me long term, and if you're like 95% of the rest of the human race, they haven't worked long term for you either. Every week, I'll give you tools, techniques, and resources you need to actually succeed in using the power of your mind to lose weight. I can't wait to teach you another mental secret, so let's dive right in. Well, hello everybody, it's Marna Thal here, and I'm excited to talk to you today about three easy steps you can take when your self-sabotaging brain is out of control with food. So let's break down some self-sabotage. What is it? So I want to make sure you all understand what self-sabotage is. Self-sabotage occurs when your logical part of your brain, that conscious mind, that's the part of you that wants to lose weight, that you have weight loss goals, that you want to see positive results, you want to kick butt, and you want to feel amazing in your skin. When that conscious part of you is at odds with your subconscious mind, which is what we at Thin Within call your inner two-year-old, that can create self-sabotage. That's the part of you, your inner two-year-old is the part of you that wants to stress eat, wants to sneak eat after everyone's in bed, or wants to numb out with food in front of the TV. Your inner two-year-old is that critical inner voice that seems to hold you back and it self-sabotages your efforts. So when your conscious mind and your unconscious mind are at odds with one another, then that's when self-sabotage occurs. What you need to know is that self-sabotage always starts with a thought. And then that thought leads to a behavior that moves you away from what you want. So an example would be, it's late at night, you've had a really hard day, and all you want to do is numb out. And you have the thought, I just want some chocolate and to numb out and relax. So it starts with that thought. Then what happens is we see an image. You see an image of chocolate. And sometimes that image gets bigger and that thought gets louder and it starts to fight with that part of you. It overrides that part of you that wants to lose weight, that wants to see amazing results on your body, that wants to get into those size eight jeans. It doesn't care because it gets big and it gets loud. You know you're in a self-sabotage breakdown when it feels like you have one foot that's on the pedal saying go, it's on the gas pedal, and it's wanting to move. It's wanting to move you towards your goals. And then you have one foot on the brake pedal that's saying stop, you can't do this. And it's like for the first half of the day, you're like, yeah, let's go. You're on the gas. And then the latter half of the day, you're on the brake pedal. If that's you, if you're finding that you're going between the brake pedal and the gas pedal, then self-sabotage is occurring inside of your brain. Now, if this is happening to you, just know that self-sabotage in and of itself is not a bad thing. It's your subconscious mind just trying to protect you, prevent you from experiencing pain, or trying to increase pleasure in that moment. And it could even be trying to help you deal with any deep-seated fear of losing weight or things like, could help you deal with any deep-seated fear. Many of you are, you might find yourself engaged in self-destructive behaviors that have become habits. So sometimes what occurs is that you have a self-sabotaging behavior and it gets linked up with food. And as you link it up and link it up and link it up and link it up, all of a sudden, self-sabotage becomes a habit. And then you are left with the self-sabotaging habit. 
We allow these behaviors to continually undermine your success and happiness, but you may not even recognize that you're doing it. So that's why today I want to help you. I'm going to help you recognize. I'm going to give you three of the key things that you can do if self, if you are self sabotaging, because I know you want to lose weight. I know you have something amazing to accomplish, but how can you accomplish it when you have your foot on the gas pedal, but also on the brake pedal? Your subconscious mind might be using food as a way to safeguard and defend yourself, even if you don't need safeguarding. So here are the three ways you can start moving yourself out of self-sabotage and into having more consistent weight loss results. First, I want you to recognize your self-sabotaging habits. What's going on? The first step always to breaking any cycle, anything that you want to transform is to get aware and to understand what is going on. How is self-sabotage showing up in your life How is it breaking you down and what can you do? So the first question, the very first question I want you to ask yourself is, what self-destructive habits and patterns are holding me back from losing weight? Again, you're going to ask yourself, what self-destructive habits and patterns are holding me back from losing weight? The most common types of self-sabotage that I see are related to fears, to stress, to negative self-talk or negative belief in yourself and or self-control, like a, a wanting to control your life, some element of control, okay? So once you are clear of what's going on, what's happening in relationship of your life and your self-destructive habits, the second thing I want you to do is then to start to deconstruct this impact. In every moment of your life, you're either taking action that either moves you toward what you want or away from the person you want to be and having the body you want to have. So in every moment, there's an opportunity to move toward your goal or to move away from it. So I want you then, once you've identified what it is and what's happening inside of your relationship with self-sabotage, the next thing I want you to do is to consider how these actions and thoughts that you're thinking, how do they conflict with your happiness? How are they holding you back from your true potential? What is going on inside of those thoughts that are really impacting your weight, your body, your life? When you understand and really start to deconstruct the impact, when you see that, wow, my need for control is really impacting my body late at night because all of a sudden I feel out of control because things didn't go my way. And so then I start to turn to food because I can control what I eat. I can control what I put in my mouth. Or you find that, wow, I feel totally out of control with stress. My relationship with stress feels out of control. I'm going and doing all day long. And then I find myself coming home, eating dinner, and then I just want a break. And so I'm using food as a way to numb out and not feel and to take my break. Okay, so we want to start looking at how are you using self-sabotage in your life? What's going on? And look at the impact. What is that stress? How is that stress impacting you? How is that relationship to control impacting you? How are your negative self-talk, your negative beliefs about yourself impacting you? And why then are you taking it out on yourself when you could be using that time to replace old patterns, old habits with love, with kindness, with insight, with curiosity, okay? So at first, you might need to learn to change your behavior by just avoiding that trigger. 
So if you notice that you usually go to the kitchen and hang out in the kitchen after six o'clock, you can replace that by going and jumping into a bathtub and writing or reading, understanding what's going on, decompressing, reducing that stress, writing about it, okay? So to avoid, we may need to avoid or change that trigger so it doesn't get reprogrammed into the new action that you wanna take. If you keep finding that there's a stressful situation that triggers you to react in a negative way, and then you look to food to numb out, maybe then it's about looking at the stress in your life and understanding its impact on you. And is there a way for you to start to ask for help? The third thing that I want you to do in addressing your self-sabotage is then to start taking action. Let's start taking action to address your true needs. So if you don't feel safe or you're worried about feeling safe in a thinner body, let's get you feeling safe. What would help you feel safe? When do you feel safe? Let's look at this. Let's address this. Let's make this happen. If you want more control, start looking at control. Is it realistic to want all this control? Is it helping you? Is it serving you? Maybe start looking for ways to ask for help and release some of this control and to then celebrate that when you do it. Maybe you notice that you need to be kinder to yourself. All day long, you're beating yourself up around your body. And then, and then at night, you just want to break from it. So you self-sabotage yourself by diving to, into food. And what you're really needing is to be kinder to yourself all day long. So you don't need a break from your thoughts. Okay? So many of you have developed little unhealthy ways of coping with stress, with coping with wanting to feel safe, with coping with wanting to be in control, or with coping with managing your inner dialogue. Food then gets programmed into your behavior, and then it takes the form of escape or a break from that negative fatter chatter. If that's what you're experiencing, one of the things you'll love in the 30-day challenge is that We do all this work to help you manage your stress and deal with your mind because you deserve to feel successful. You deserve to start seeing your body transform. You are not inadequate. So start today, right now, and acknowledge how amazing you are, that you can be somebody who can consistently lose weight, that you can get down to your weight loss goals, that you're beautiful, that you're important, that you're capable, and that there are other ways to start dealing with control, perfectionism, the need for safety, the need for a break, the need to relax. Food is just food. And it's time for you to put it in its place because it's a false notion that food is helping you manage your stress or your feelings or your life. Doesn't. It's just your thoughts about food at night or when you go to it that you've linked up. So now it's time to begin changing your thoughts and linking them up with new thoughts and then new behaviors. Changing your negative behaviors is fundamental if you want to self, if you want to stop self-sabotaging yourself. You can change your negative behaviors, but if you don't know what you're doing, why you're doing it, and how it's showing up in your life, how can you make a change? So if you want to take the 30-day challenge, one of the most incredible things you can do to get ready for it is to get clear of your self-sabotaging behaviors. Why are you turning to food? What's going on inside your relationship with self-sabotage? What are you scared of? What are you fearful of? What are you doing inside of that relationship? That will help you to understand your relationship with food 
and it will accelerate your results inside of the 30-day challenge when you begin to change these new patterns. We spend a lot of time reflecting on why you're turning to food, what that's about, what you really need, and what needs are not being met in your life that are being met with food. Now, of course, these three things today will help you to absolutely get in front of your self-sabotage. But if you want to deepen it, if you want to practice it, then that's what the 30-day challenge is. It's so helpful in going well beyond a food plan. It is not a a food plan. Some people think, oh, is the 30-day challenge a food plan? No, the 30-day challenge is an exploration into the mental and emotional world of your relationship with food. And I do that so you can start making the necessary adjustments in a kind and loving way that fits into your life to begin losing weight. But if you're self-sabotaging yourself with food, then you have an opportunity to start to get aware of what is going on and start to understand its impact. What's the impact of self-sabotaging? What's the impact of your need for control? What's the impact of your stress on your body? Because from there, number three, you can then start taking action to address your true needs so that you can feel safe, in control, kind, and loving. And that's when your body will start to release the weight. So. The three easy steps you can take is one, recognize your self-sabotaging habits. What are they? Ask yourself, what self-destructive habit and pattern are holding me back from losing weight? And remember, the most common are related to fear, stress, negative belief in yourself, and or control. Then start to deconstruct the impact. What's the impact of stress control on your life? What is happening? And then three, take action. Take action to address your true need. It's late at night. You're wanting to relax. Your brain starts thinking about food. What's your true need? Identify it. Say, wait, wait, this isn't about food. This is about stress relief. This is about relaxation. This is about me wanting to not make decisions and not be in control. Okay, what can I do to relieve and alleviate the stress? What can I do to alleviate the control or to feel more in control? I'm going to do that by writing a to-do list for tomorrow. This has to do with my fears of showing up in my life. What am I really fearful of? It's okay to have that fear and show up anyway. Notice, tell yourself, give yourself the awareness of how you've shown up in relationship to your fear. How you've felt fear before and you keep showing up and how awesome that is. Alleviate what's really going on under the surface. Okay? And these three steps will help set you free from your self-sabotaging brain that feels out of control with food. All right, everybody, start practicing. Take action. You can do this. All right, have an amazing day. Make sure you are signed up for the 30-day challenge. Get on the wait list. That's all you have to do. Just get on the wait list. I'll have a link under this in the show notes so that you can get on the wait list. And then if you want to take even further action, you can take my free weight loss course, or you can take the thin within method while you're waiting to take the 30 day challenge. All right, everybody sending you so much love. Here's to transforming your self-sabotaging habits. Bye everybody.